Last week, we talked about how too much cardio can make you fat. This was a hot topic. Um, this topic is actually not spoken about enough, especially when it comes to females and our hormones. And that's why I think last week it kind of shocked a lot of people because there's not a lot of talk about it and it's super duper important. So today I wanted to share how you can apply cardio to your routine while still keeping your hormones healthy. Last week we explained why doing too much cardio will actually cause you to get fat. Um, but I also want to incorporate, you know, some reasons on how you can incorporate it. So I wanted to dive into more of the how and when to incorporate it so that you can keep your hormones healthy while also keeping cardio in your routine. So this is something that personally changed my life. I had a ton of hormonal imbalances, um, thyroid issues, all that. And it also helped change a lot of my clients' lives. So I used to experience uh, my period going away for months at a time. Uh, I used to deal with irregular periods along with heightened PMS symptoms, like my mood swings were out of control, incontrollable. My emotions were at an all time high. And it is a real thing and it could be under control. Um, so when you incorporate the right amount of cardio in your routine, your hormones can finally get balanced, which brings your cycle back to normal all while decreasing your PMS symptoms, because this actually may be a shocker to most uh, females, but PMS symptoms are not something we have to live with, although most of our doctors will tell you otherwise. It's like, oh, you're a female, deal with it, you have PMS. Like, this is, these are, these are things that doctors tell you all the time and it's just the worst advice because they're not really telling you what you can do nutrition-wise or exercise-wise to fix it or prevent it. So if you're someone who has excruciating cramps, you get a lot of headaches and migraines, mood swings, acne breakouts, you're super duper you know, low energy and fatigued, your body feels heavier, like a lot heavier than normal around your cycle, all of this means that your hormones are actually imbalanced. It's not normal. Uh, the good news is you can actually fix this with the proper nutrition and the right exercise. So today, so that it's not super overwhelming, we're just going to talk about how we can do that through exercise. And I want you to imagine, you know, you doing a workout and have you ever experienced, um, you know, a time where you felt like you were working out so hard um, and you were working out so often, but you still couldn't seem uh, to see the result that you wanted with your weight loss. Um, you couldn't see any sort of change with your body composition. You kind of just were going through the motions, doing more and more and more and more because you didn't really know what else to do. So adding more and more cardio at times, which is what we discussed last week, could actually cause your weight loss to stay at a standstill. Um, or it can cause you to gain more weight. So you may have even experienced uh, adding in, you know, more classes and workouts, um, boot camp classes, more cycling classes. You want to go running more. And you always think more and more and more to only find out that as you keep doing more, you're, you're left feeling more tired, you're more exhausted, um, and still no progress. So our body is not designed to always be in the go, go, go mode, something that I have to tell myself every day. Uh, but it's not meant to be in the go, go, go mode every single day. No matter what you read, um, if you study high performers, High performers even know the importance of resting and the importance of recovery. It's huge. Um, and I've been in a place where I always wanted to work out constantly. If I missed a day, I beat myself up about it. Um, I would get stressed out because you're always underneath that notion of, oh, you always have to be doing something. And it's something that I never realized that I was actually doing more harm to my body than good. And this happens to a lot of women that I speak with because, you know, even someone like me, I was working out at one point just because I loved doing it because I enjoy working out, but I, I wasn't resting. I wasn't recovering. So knowing this really helps you realize that, you know, high intensity workouts 30 days out of the week is really not what um, our body needs nor what it wants to lose weight. 
So, you know, how do we work out that allows our hormones to stay in a healthy cycle throughout the week that also allows us to reach our top physique along with more consistent moods? I'm sure all you females are really happy to hear that. Um, you want more energy, more consistent energy, less PMS symptoms throughout the month. So how can we do that is the number one question or the million dollar question. I always make up my own phrases. First and foremost, um, something that is super important to know is that most, if not all exercise programs and diet plans are always based off male bodies. When I started uh, studying this, I was like mind boggled. I'm like, wow, this is insane. All of the keto, paleo, Atkins, uh, CrossFit, cardio, all these all these exercise and nutrition plans are only studied on male bodies. They never perform these studies with women while being in the beginning, middle, or end of their cycle, which is a huge piece of information that is lacking in these reports. As a female, it's frightening. Um, because it's really critical information. Because our body works on a 28-day uh, clock. A male body works on a 24-hour clock. Completely different. So here's some key information you want to know about the female body and how your body responds depending on where you're at in your cycle. So this is how you are going to learn how to exercise. That's also going to promote your, your hormones to stay in a healthy place. So in the first half of your cycle, your body can burn more fat easier. Um, your body is also in the position to gain more lean muscle faster. So this is in the first half of your cycle. During the first half of your cycle, your blood sugar levels are actually more regulated, which always um, leads you to feeling more energized. Um, it increases your performance. You always feel good. Like after you're done with your period, you know, that week typically after you're like, yeah, I'm back to normal, right? Um, and you may have even said that before. So this makes it a lot easier um, for you to crush your workouts and do more things around the house and you may even want to be a little bit more social around this time um, Have you ever noticed that once um, you either get your period or after you get your period? Um, you know you start feeling more like you less irritated, right? Everything around you just feels easier. Um, things are easier. It's easier for you to do certain things and complete certain things. You're in a better mood. You're even more inclined to do more challenging things. You're up for the challenge. You'll take more risks. So this is no coincidence at all. This is because your body is meant to feel this way during this phase. This is not by accident. I'll repeat again. It's not by accident. It's not a coincidence either. So when we learn this, we could really prepare our body to actually do certain tasks during certain phases to increase productivity. So our body also has higher testosterone during the first part of our cycle, the first phase of our cycle. Um, and this also makes it easier to build lean muscle, um, especially when we're incorporating more uh, weight. And it, you could now focus on getting stronger during this phase. Um, this also helps you hit new PRs. So this is a time where you want to go to the gym and you want to crank it up during your exercises. You really want to be going all out during this phase because you feel your best. So you can actually do that and it'll be a benefit because everything is actually working for you in this phase, um, which is why you want to pick up the weights and maybe do more cardio, um, do more HIIT workouts during this time because you're energized to do that. So here is, um, here is where you and uh, most people, and myself included, mess up. Because once I made the simple tweak, the effectiveness of my workouts increased dramatically. Um, so as you may or may not know, um, by now you may, um, high intensity workouts can really cause um, irregular or missed periods along with heightened PMS symptoms. So I know we spoke about this a little bit earlier as well. So when you're doing constant cardio throughout your entire cycle, meaning from day one to day 30 or however months are in the, well, 20 days are in your cycle, but in an entire month, it causes an imbalance um, in your hormones, which affects your stamina, 
which is why you're tired, your strength, uh, your mood, and the real kicker here is it affects your metabolism. So all things we need to have an effective um, workout are really compromised during this cycle. So this vicious cycle is what causes women with hormonal imbalances to stay stuck and it really is preventing them from maximizing their results. So I want to review a little fun fact, um, something that's really important to learn because in your second half of your cycle, um, the female body actually starts to burn more calories and your metabolism in fact speeds up. So knowing this information really allows you to now make um, some changes that will prevent your body from pumping out more cortisol, which causes the muffin top around your midsection. Um, and high cortisol leads to more fat storage, um, along with burning through muscle, which we don't want. Um, so this is why in the second phase of your cycle, it's really important to make some tweaks and adjustments because if we're pumping out more cortisol and now we're storing more fat and we're burning through muscle, we're not gonna feel good. We're also not gonna like how we feel um, or how we look. So the reason why uh, during this phase you're feeling more tired and you're fatigued is because your testosterone that actually gives you the stamina um, and the estrogen that helps regulate your mood along with your blood sugar levels, um, which, you know, leave you feeling energized all the time. All of these things dip during this phase. So your estrogen, your testosterone, and your blood sugar levels in the second phase of your cycle dips, leaving you feeling less energized, a little bit more fatigued, a little bit in a, you feel like your mood is a little bit down, you're not feeling yourself, but it's literally because of what's happening inside. So the reason why you're really feeling this dip in emotion and strength and energy is not really your fault, but it's just what you're doing during this phase that causes this to be dramatically impacted um, that's increasing these symptoms. So yes, it is natural. Sorry, I have an itch. <laughs> um, it is natural for these things to dip. But when you're not exercising correctly in this phase, now all of these things are going to heighten. They're going to increase. They're going to be exaggerated. So I want to be clear before moving forward because I'm not telling you to now do nothing during the second half of your cycle by any means. That's not my message. But I am telling you that you have to pivot and you have to make some training adjustments during this phase so you can feel better. And you want to act more specific to this phase and once you start acting and doing things that are specific to the phase that you're in, um, you're actually going to feel better and you're going to get better results. So this also changes your, um, your mental attitude significantly because you know now you are prepped in knowing why you may feel a dip during this phase. Um, you know, sometimes we beat up ourselves when we're not feeling good or we're down or we're, we're tired. Meanwhile, if you knew where you were at in your cycle, you're going to be like, oh, okay, this is normal and how can I get out of it? So you don't have to be super critical about yourself because you know your body is going through some changes. This happens every single month <laughs> as long as you are on a 28-day cycle. And the good thing about this is being aware because you can now do things to promote um, during this phase more stability. Um, and when you're feeling the dips, there are things that you could incorporate that will allow you to feel a little bit more energized. You won't be in such a bad mood. Um, you won't be so um, inconsistent with how you feel. And sometimes when you do, you're not feeling good, it's okay. You could accept it. Um, so, sorry, I'm getting messages here and it's distracting me. So you may be wondering, okay, so what do I do in this phase, um, to increase my results? And I first want to review what not to do during the second phase of your cycle. So you do not want to try high intensity boot camp classes in the second phase of your cycle. Um, because that's cardio. You want to get cardio out. Cardio is for the first phase. And you don't want to try and hit 
uh, PRs during this phase because you aren't looking to get stronger during this phase. Uh, remember, testosterone drops. So you are simply trying to just stay active and rest and recover more to prime your body for the phase that will help you feel more stronger and more energetic and you know the phase where you're able to build more muscle and burn more because right now your body needs more rest um not a ton of cardio that's going to start pumping more cortisol which is going to cause you to start feeling more tired more fatigued and cause you to start feeling um like you're storing onto more fat. So this is not a phase for you um, to feel lazy as if you aren't making progress. In fact, if, if you do this, you will actually make more progress because you are working with your hormones rather than against your hormones. So when you are late in your cycle, typically a week or a little more, um, you know, before your period, everyone is different, so it may vary a little, but your performance is always going to be lower uh, than if it were the first half of your cycle. So when you know this, you don't have to be critical. When I go to the gym and it's the week before I'm getting my period, I know that I'm not going to crank things up because if I do, I'm going to feel like crap and I'm going to be like, oh my God, I'm not strong or I got so weak or what's going on. And in fact, that's not what is happening. I'm doing the wrong things for this phase. So less is more is very important during the second half of your phase. And just a full disclaimer, um, and it's just really important to note, though, you know, just because someone looks like they're in shape does not necessarily mean they are healthy. You could be fit, you could be, you can look like you're in good shape, but inside you could still be unhealthy. You could still have hormonal imbalances that need to be fixed on that can really help you achieve the optimal level of health physically and mentally, emotionally. Um, what we discussed yesterday. So what should you be focusing on during this phase when it comes to working out when you know, you know, cardio and high intensity workouts are not it. Um, new PRs are not the focus either during the second phase. So those are things that you want to do in the first phase. The four things you want to focus on in the second phase of your cycle um, is resistance training. Uh, bands, weights, body weight, but you're not going for stronger and new PRs. You want to make sure you're recovering, flexibility, and rest. Yes, rest. <laughs> Resting is something you want to be super conscious about. It's one of the hardest ones for me, if I'm being honest. Um, so it may take you some time to adapt, but once you do, you'll start feeling a difference. You'll be more convinced. For me, it's the reason why I had hormonal imbalances for so long is because I never wanted to rest and it really hurt me in the long run. So I always related, you know, not exercising enough with, you know, gaining more weight. But when you learn what your body needs in order to lose weight, you will then be able to do exactly what your body needs to match that result. It's very, very similar to, you know, how we have to reframe our mind on eating. And, you know, a lot of us think that in order to lose weight, we have to eat less. We should know by now that that's not the case. Same thing goes for your, for your exercise. So two other tricks you want to add to your workout routine during this phase. Um, and this is only if you want to maximize your results further, depending on where your hormonal health is. Um, really dependent for everyone, uh, but it could be helpful if you're just really looking to get, you know, your hormones in more um, balance if you do feel like you have some imbalances, but you really do want to focus on time. Um, during the second phase, when you are getting closer to your period, um, you want to try and limit your workouts to about 35 minutes, um, along with trying to work out later in the day. So the the whole later in the day thing can really be um, dependent on your schedule for work. It's not critical, but it's something that you can try. Um, for me, I know the length of the workout makes a huge difference for me during this phase. The morning versus afternoon isn't super critical because again, for me, I feel like I'm a little bit more rested in the morning. Um, everyone is different though. Um, but you do have to try it first and listen to your body and then you'll be able to determine, you know, what works for you. 
So again, timing of your workout is important. I know during this phase, if I go an hour or an hour and a half, like I'm feeling it. Um, and when I start feeling it, my body feels like cement. And I used to have days where it's like, oh, just keep going. Like you can do it. It's like, no, during that phase, you want to listen to your body. You want to rest. If you're working out and you feel horrible, you want to rest. Um, so to start making some changes during your second phase of your cycle, um, you want to just refrain from high intensity cardio and you can do walking. Walking is fine. Um, it's also good for you to do. Um, and you want to aim for more resistance training without pushing yourself to get stronger. So I typically will do exactly what I did the prior week without any loading. So I'm not going to load more weight. Um, because that's typically what works for me. Um, you can do more yoga, you can do stretching along with some Pilates, um, which is also a beneficial workout during that phase because they are lower intensity. Um, so yeah, I know this is a ton of information. Um, however, that is why I created a super simple report that you can download that will review this for you to hold on to. Um, this is something that my clients love because it really allows them to realize Okay, how can I treat my body um, and how can I incorporate more face specific exercises to help me feel more energized? And, you know, it really helps them maximize their results. Now they're putting in effort, but now they're actually seeing it and they're actually feeling it. Um, and, you know, a lot of them tell me that they have a lot more stable moods along with feeling like their metabolism is at a place that they, you know, are consistently losing weight and they feel better and things are feeling more consistent um so it's not that you can't do cardio it's just when you're doing it and how much you're doing it and what tweaks are you doing in the second phase of your of your cycle where are you pivoting because you really want to make sure that you're making changes month to month um, and that's what's really going to set you up for success. So go ahead and download my free report below. Tomorrow I will be sharing my secret on how to stop procrastinating when it comes to doing anything you do. This is something that is easy to apply, something anyone can do to apply to their day. Um, and you can actually see a significant increase in your productivity. Again, if you liked this video um, or you feel someone will find benefit from this information or maybe you do some coaching yourself, um, please go ahead, like it, comment it, share it with a friend. Um, I appreciate you for being here and I'll see you tomorrow.